Hey, this is just a quick video to express my frustration with the state of personal computing um, in the sense that this is what we could be using uh, for personal computing. This is sufficient for most people to do all of the stuff that they need to do on a computer, a mobile phone, it's gotten to the point where they have enough computing power to handle just about everything a normal person needs it to do. I mean, for goodness sake, I can I can edit photos, I can edit videos on this thing. Right now, I'm using it to monitor the video feed from my iPad as I'm recording this, just to make sure that things are going according to plan. Mobile phones have enough power to do what we need them to do as desktops. And yet, I haven't seen a lot of effort in this area. Yes, I know about Windows Continuum. I also know they've been at it since 2015. Perhaps this year we'll see some better devices. Certainly the market looks a little more promising when it comes to Windows phones uh, and uh, being used at des as desktops. Um, I also hear some Android phones have a capability that's sort of similar but uh, Apple, which is what I'm using to record here, um, using Apple equipment, Apple is really lagging behind the times in this area. And I'm going to uh, bite a little bit uh, here, um, take a bite out of their uh, you know, proverbial Apple, because they deserve it. They have enough of a war chest to, to do something about this, but they don't want to. Um, I, I think they don't want to. Um, make mobile phones that we can also use as desktops because it would erode uh, their profits. Obviously, if you're only going to need to buy a mobile phone uh, to handle most of the stuff that you need around the house, then you're not going to be buying a tablet and you're not going to be buying a desktop from them. And that means no more iMacs, no more MacBooks, no more Mac Pros. Um, you're just going to be getting an iPhone. Right? A mobile phone. I mean, that's the basic idea. You should be able to come home with your mobile phone after you've used it all day, plug it into a dock, you know, just stick it into a dock like this here, bring it into frame, just slide it into a dock, a dock that is connected to a screen and a keyboard and a mouse. And yes, I know people, there are people out there who want to get rid of keyboards and mice, but I'm sorry, they're going to be around for a while. It's, uh, trying to do things on a touch screen and fiddling around with you know fat fingers on on old screen trying to do photo editing or video editing or anything where you know you you re it requires precision it's it's useless it's pointless and no I'm not going to get a stylus and carry it around and, and and fiddle with it on the screen I'm sorry um I need a keyboard and I need a mouse and I need a keyboard where I can have proper finger travel because the proper finger travel, that distance, is this sensorial input for the brain. It's it's the feedback that the brain gets when you know you've clicked on something. And the manufacturers are trying to make keyboards tinier and tinier and thinner and thinner. And I've I've seen oh I've I've seen uh, keyboards that are projected onto tabletops for a while. I, I saw one first in two thousand seven or two thousand eight. And guess what? They still haven't caught on because it sucks. There's no input when you click. When you when you well, when you click, you can't click a virtual key. But there is no input when you actually put your finger on something and you start typing. We need that input. It's something we've been used to for so long, and it's something that's very useful for the brain to let you know. Yeah, I've clicked that key. I can move on. Click on the next key to form the word. Um, so that's what I'm looking for from manufacturers, okay? If any of you are listening out there, give us a proper desktop experience from a mobile phone. It has enough computing power. Uh, I realize that some changes need to take place, place to the mobile operating systems uh, to make them more desktop-like, or perhaps those features only turn on when, when you plug it into that dock that connects it to the screen and the keyboard and the mouse. But it doesn't take much, really. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the idea of, of sticking a little cable in my iPhone here and connecting it to a screen 
just so I can have a mirror display and then fiddling around on, on the little tiny screen to try to get the, the cursor on the screen to move or whatever. That's bullshit. That is utter, utter bullshit. Um, we just need, you know, a mouse cursor to show up on screen when we plug it onto the dock. We need to be able to drag and drop between folders. And we need to also access network files without special apps, you know, without AirDrop, without Bluetooth, without uh, messaging files back and forth. I just want to be able to access files on the network like I would with a desktop computer. And I don't think that's much to ask, honestly. I just don't. And then we also need the apps to resize themselves according to the size of the screen. But I think given the most apps nowadays are built with, you know, vector files instead of, uh, you know, PNGs or bitmap files, they can probably resize. So I think we're good with that. But um, please, you know, just think about, just think about the energy savings for a bit, right? Think about how much power a laptop or a desktop uses, right? A laptop uses anywhere between 40 to 80 watts of power <clears throat> when you use it and when it's plugged in. And, uh, well, some of those gaming that laptops use as much power as a desktop. I've seen them use 200, 300 watts. They have these huge power bricks. It's ridiculous. Uh, and then desktops, that's what they use on a regular basis. Um, given, I mean, given my, my iMac, for example, uses about 120, 130 watts of power, sometimes a little less, but that's about what it uses. Um, and it has a laptop hardware inside. Did you, did you know that, right? You knew that iMacs actually have laptop-grade hardware inside, so they can be small and then fit inside that thin display. Um, they don't have desktop components because those are too big to fit in there. Um, so, uh, you know, desktop use anywhere between 200, 300, 400, 500 watts, depending on how powerful the system is, and we just don't need to be using that much power. Now, I realize that they only use that much power when you do when you make them do a lot of number crunching, you know, like with uh, video editing, photo editing, playing games, and that sort of thing, but it's still too much power to be using. Think about the power savings with, with uh, iPhones uh, or with, with mobile devices. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm fixated on iPhones because that's what I've been using for a long time. But think about how much less power they use. What, what do they use? Two, three watts when they're charging? I haven't even measured it, but it's something ridiculously small. And then they go about a day, day and a half um, if you don't have a lot of uh, battery-hungry apps installed on it, on that power. It's, it's tremendous savings. And we keep talking about reducing our car carbon footprint and uh, making devices more energy efficient. We already have made devices that are very energy efficient. We just need to use them properly, right? I mean, we get home and we sit this thing on the table when this could be the main computer in the house. It has enough in there to make it run like that. So, that was my little rant for <laughs> this video. Um, I would love to see uh, better options uh, from companies out there. Companies who perhaps don't have an agenda, maybe don't have uh, profits, too many profits to lose if they do this. I think the profits that they lose in, in other areas of their business will probably be gained because people will be buying more of their mobile devices if they uh, engineer them to be properly used as desktop replacements. So thanks for watching. See you next time.